Hello again, and welcome to another edition of Mastermind Minutes. My name is Gary Oki Grosso. I am the managing partner for Franchise Growth Solutions. That's this thing right back here. And also the publisher of FranchiseMoneyMaker.com. For those of you who are new to the podcast, Mastermind Minutes in a word or two is uh, it's a simple concept. We have one guest. We ask one question and we get one expert answer. We do it in minutes, not hours. Uh, and while we realize that that bit of information is sort of like the trailer in a movie, uh, we will certainly give you contact information uh, for our guest. If you want to learn more about their company or what they do, you can contact them directly. And, and today, my guest is John Ramsey. And John has over 28 years of experience uh, in the restaurant franchise sales and development side of uh, of our industry. Uh, he joined Noodles and Company in November of 2020, sort of in the thick of the whole COVID thing as the vice president of franchise sales, which we've had a few people who have entered their positions during COVID. So it's kind of like jumping into the fire. Uh, prior to Noodles, uh, John most recently held positions in franchise and restaurant growth efforts uh, for Bruxy International, Marco's Pizza Franchising. Uh, so his career really spans not only, <clears throat> excuse me, not only over the years, but certainly um, in developing restaurants and in growing brands, he developed over 900 restaurants in all 50 states and 12 different countries. He's a resident of Southern California, where it's a lot warmer today than it is here in New York, I'm sure. And um, he and his wife love traveling and spending time with their two kids in their free time. And told me, I think he told me one of his sons lives up here in New York. So John, Thank you very much for being with us today. I appreciate your time. And before we get into the question, maybe you want to uh, fill in some blanks. Tell us a little bit more about yourself. Tell us a little bit more about Noodles and Company, and then we'll we'll dive into it. Sure. Thanks, Gary. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for having me here. Uh, yeah. So uh, uh, as you mentioned, I did start. I started my career in New York City, and actually got my degree in architecture. Moved to New York. Like, where else would you go to practice architecture? And like many people in the franchise industry, I sort of got sidetracked. Um, traditional architecture was slow at the time. Uh, I had worked in retail and restaurants kind of growing up and in high school and college. So sort of defaulted back to what I knew. Uh, started working for Bloomingdale's um, and really discovered that uh, within most corporations, they have in-house design, which they didn't teach us that in school. So started designing department stores. Then I got my first restaurant position with Sabaro out of Long Island and started designing restaurants. And I think what I, um, so that really how I got started in the restaurant industry. And then one thing led to another and here I am still doing restaurant development and growth. And I, I would say one of the early lessons I learned from working designing restaurants is that every dollar matters, right? And if you think of, from a franchisee's perspective, it's their money that they're investing in a business. And so they're very mindful of the dollar. So unlike working for a corporation, we sort of had this big, you know, capital spend pot to work from. As a franchisee, every dollar counts. Yeah. Uh, and certainly from my earlier career working with the Sbarro brothers, you know, even though, you know, they were very mindful of the dollars we spent. So I learned early on how to be very efficient um, and really to appreciate the value of the dollar in building. And so that's really helped me throughout my franchise career. Well, I, well, I hear you on that. I can tell you, you know, there's no, no better place to learn how to build efficient restaurants than in places like New York, where the rent can be $300 a square foot, $500 a square foot. You mentioned Sabaro. They had two locations in Times Square. I remember in the nineties. And then when Times Square got reinvented, they ended up with one, I think on 47th or 48th street. And, uh, was sort of their newer design, so it was much more efficient. Um, and, and I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, value engineering, the footprint, as we say in the business, is, is super, super important. So uh, just real quick sidebar, um, you, went, for, you, you uh, went to school in New York for architecture, you Cooper Union, Pratt Institute, where you, where'd you go? Virginia Tech. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, so when you came to New York, you were, you were ready to breed and ready to, you were ready to hit the ground. Oh, I think I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to be designing skyscrapers, living in Soho, driving a Porsche. Yeah, <laughs> got it all planned out. No, I hear you. I hear you. All right. So, so our question today, uh, and I'm, I'm I'm glad to hear you've got a background in in you know in in not only the sales side, the op side, but the design side, because the question today really is, you know, why does 
why does franchise experience matter? And I think I'd like to put the question sort of in two buckets. Maybe we can attack each one separately. From a franchisor's point of view, because we do development, um, you know, I think it's important that the franchisor or people on the team have background in franchising. I mean, that seems very obvious. And then the other bucket is when you're recruiting franchisees uh, into your system, a lot of folks, I have a lot of clients that they won't bring anyone into the concept that doesn't have franchising background. Um, they want them to understand the idea that it's a system, not running a business, you're running a system. So just maybe you can start us out and let us give us your thoughts on why, you know, why franchise experience matters to you. Yeah, no, I, I think those are both excellent positions, and I would agree with both of them. Um, you know, so I think, you know, a lot of franchisors will use the phrase, well, our number one priority is franchisee profitability. Mm -hmm. um, and so sort of with your first perspective from a franchisor, okay, if I'm a franchisor and I say that, number one, what does that really mean? And, and how do I validate that? And, you know, I think when, when you, if you look at Noodles, for example, as a brand, uh, Noodles is a good example of a brand that was, it continues to be predominantly company owned and operated. Mm -hmm. um, however, they went public in 2012, uh, got a lot of capital and decided to start expanding through company operations. And for them, it was a very humbling experience. Number one, they grew too fast. They didn't have the operational backup and bench strength. Um, they tried to expand the menu to be more things to more people. And guess what? The profitability was not there. The success was not there. So very humbly, they had to pull back and say, you know what? We can't. Therefore, if you were trying to impose that on a franchisee, which often we do, um, the result would be your franchisees would close. They'd be dissatisfied. Um, so I think it was a lesson for them to really appreciate what, what does that franchisee profitability really mean and translate it to the real world. So they said, okay, we need to we need to fix the business model, fix the menu, fix the operating system, sort of all the components of that profitability system before we start franchising again. So, you know, sort of from a noodles perspective, and, and, and I think that was, and so when I started talking with the brand, and by the way, I have a long history with the brand, but when I started talking about joining them, that to me was a really important piece, that sort of humility and appreciation and really be able to articulate what is franchisee profitability mean from a franchisor perspective. From a franchisee perspective, the experience and, you know, I, so you, you pose an interesting dilemma, right? Is that often we say, oh yes, we wanna recruit franchisees that either already have restaurant experience or already franchisee experience. Um, I think that's, I, uh, to me, that's always been throughout my career, it's been an interesting conversation because some franchisors at a certain point, they say, okay, well, that's great, but we need to grow. We need the fees. We need the funds, right? And so they sort of say, well, we'll make an exception this time, you know, continue with this person. Other brands, I think, stick to their, uh, you know, stick to that strategy and say, no. Uh, and so I, I look at it from perspective to say, well, what is it about being a franchisee and what is it about being in the restaurant business that we can really identify what are those key traits and characteristics of an individual. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've taken that a step further and say, okay, well, it's one thing to say you just have experience, but let's now break down what is what does the experience really lead to? So for example, um, operating a restaurant, you know, it's not for everybody. It's not that it's more difficult than working in the corporate environment, but it's just not for everybody. There's a different experience. Um, being a restaurant franchisee, not only are you running restaurants, but you become a real estate person having to find sites, become a development person having to, to sign construction contracts and pull a building permit. You become, you know, the uh, social networker within your community and having to connect with the Chamber of Commerce, uh, charities. You know, so to me, there's a, you become a small business owner. Uh, so there's sort of, to me, there's these other components of being in the restaurant franchise business that you need to evaluate. It, and often I have found that some of the best franchisees I've worked with didn't necessarily start in a restaurant, but they had the vision 
and they had that ability to bring in people and surround themselves with people to start to fill in those key roles mm -hmm. uh, to, to, to be successful. So that's the way I look at it from a franchisee's perspective. Yeah, I, 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 I certainly agree with, with most of what you said. I, I, I think that finding the key qualities, and when we say franchisees that have experience, you know, what, to your point, what is that experience? I mean, if folks are good managers, if they understand how to develop people, which I think is key, uh, develop people, if they understand deployment of capital, finding the right real estate, I think all of that matters, whether they run a restaurant or not. And, and the reason I say that, it, well, it's kind of layered. First of all, I think it, it depends on a few things. It depends on the complexity of the brand. Uh, obviously, if you buy a franchise that is a full service restaurant with an alcohol component with servers in it, that's a lot more moving parts than if you're buying a franchise that is either a fast casual concept or I don't know, maybe it's an ice cream shop. Um, so I think that certainly determines not only the level of experience, but the type of experience that you need. Uh, certainly on the, on the full service side, you might need someone who has far more experience in real estate and people management on the running a little ice cream shop, someone who's got more experience in connecting with the neighborhood and becoming kind of the community piece. So I think the brand has a lot to do with it. Um, I think also the evolution of the company, where the company is, has a lot to do with it. And my personal story, you know, I started out uh, as a franchisee of Dunkin' Donuts. Um, way, way back when dinosaurs ruled the world. We actually made donuts in the shop at that point. Um, I can tell you that at the tender age of, I guess I was 24, 25, somewhere around there, if Dunkin' was a startup franchise or an emerging brand, I probably would have failed. But their safety net was so robust. Their systems were so proven out at that point that they were able to take someone like me who had experience in sales and experience in some management, you know, what experience do you really have when you're 25? Okay, <laughs> let's be real here. But they were able to plug me into a well-developed system. So I think the level of franchisee experience is based on, you know, what the brand does and where the brand is at in their, in their evolution. Um, maybe you want to tell us a little bit about Noodles and Company in terms of where they are. And by the way, I appreciate the bloody nose story because I think it's great when a brand gets a bloody nose and goes, well, wait a minute, we're not doing that anymore. And why do I say that? Uh, even though I'm not a big believer in company stores, but that's another discussion for another day. I, I think it's important that franchisors don't experiment with franchisees' money. Um, so maybe you want to speak a little bit about how, how Noodles and Company uh, focuses on developing their system for people with experience and people for without. The last thing I want to just say to that is you sometimes bringing in people who have a lot of experience when you're a new franchisor, that's, that could be the tail wagging the dog. So there's all these moving parts to it. I'm just curious your take on experience versus non-experience and how it relates to noodles and company. Yeah, so I, for Noodles & Company, it's, I would say it's a significant part of our history and a significant part of where we are today um, in, in all positive ways. So a little bit, and I'm going to share a little bit of my personal story mixed in here because they're related. So Please, Noodles yeah. started, started in 1995, so it was 25, 26 years ago. Um, actually, the founder uh, originally was in New York City, and you'll appreciate the story. Um, as you know, in New York, a lot of your food is takeout and delivery. You know, they were sort of one of the, <laughs> the originators of that, that model that, that now is everywhere, right? Well, if you wanted, depending on, on the type of food you wanted, you either call the Chinese restaurant or the Italian restaurant or, or the Greek restaurant, and that's what you got. And so his light bulb went off and says, gee, I love all these different dishes. They're all noodle based. Why can't I go to one place to get a different flavor that I would like, but still be a noodle based? You know, if, if my wife wants pad thai, and I want spaghetti and meatballs, we have to go to two separate restaurants. So that was the light bulb moment for him originally the brand. So we moved to Denver, Colorado uh, in the 90s, started this concept, Noodles and Company. The whole idea being is to, with noodles as the base, to use different culinary techniques, Mediterranean, Asian, American, mac and cheese, and sort of offer it a noodle-based menu, which, which is unique and different. The other thing that was 
uh, not sort of unique and different, but key to Denver. If you think of two other brands in the 90s that started in Denver, one is Chipotle and the other is Qdoba. Really, Noodles, Chipotle, and Qdoba were three of the original fast casual brands. That was really when this whole segment started to grow. So in the year 2000, not long after Noodles started, um, is when I moved to California and started working for a fast casual startup called Rubio's, Mexican. Yeah. And like a lot of us in the fast casual business at those early years, right? We, we look to our competitors, our peers to see what are they doing? What, what can we borrow? You know, what, what, how do you differentiate your brand how, from a service standpoint, menu, et cetera? So we took a trip to Denver, uh, a mystery shop, Chipotle, Kudo, the Noodles and Company. Well, our chief operating officer at the time was so impressed with Noodles and Company that he wound up leaving Rubio's and became the first franchisee of Noodles and Company in the early 2000s. Uh, he lived here in Southern California where I live. So the very first, or one of the very first Noodles franchises was here in Southern California, very close to where I live today. Um, so my kids literally have grown up on Noodles. I've grown up with it. You know, I've seen, seen the company evolve over time. So that's sort of my connection to it. Now, so now fast forward, and, and I sort of alluded to before, um, that you know, Noodles has gone through some, uh, they went public in 2012. Uh, by the way, uh, so during those years, growing the brand, um, one of the things that they learned very quickly, a very positive perspective, was that the brand itself traveled very well. You know, many brands struggle with sort of a regional perspective. Uh, what Noodles learned very early on was that regardless of where they went, whether it was Florida, North Carolina, Chicago, or California, is that it was widely accepted and you didn't have to sort of teach people how to eat noodles or what the new, different noodle dishes were. Yeah. Um, so it was a very scalable brand from that perspective. Yeah. Um, so I think uh, they went public in 2012, really focused on company growth, sort of pulled back, realized that they grew too quickly and really started to focus on the profitability. Well, some of the positive steps that were taken in the last five years were really around off-premise dining, uh, really focused around employee retention, uh, which is, if you now think about just those two alone, employee retention and off-premise dining, what, is, what have become two of the sort of standard bearers for being successful in a COVID environment? And it's those two. So, so we've actually seen, and you mentioned I joined the brand during COVID. Well, part of the reason was, is that whereas a lot of brands were going in one direction with COVID, Noodles was going up. Off-premise took off, uh, sales took off. Um, and so the ability and opportunity to expand was there. Um, our franchisees who had been in the system for a long time, who were sort of on the sidelines waiting for the brand to retool, they're now starting to grow again. They were seeing record profitability from previous years. So it was really sort of a perfect timing for the brand to start growing and for me to join them. Yeah. And, 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 and I can see why. And, I, and you're right. I mean, noodles definitely travel better than fried chicken or French fries. I mean, that just doesn't, doesn't work. Um, if you've just joined us, we're uh, speaking with John Ramsey, who is the vice president of franchise sales with Noodles and Company. And what I'd like to do you know, we're, we're talking about why franchise experience matters. I, I want to expand on that question a bit and maybe ask you in your experience, not just with, not just with Noodles and Company, with, with other brands you've worked with, there's pros and cons to everything. So I can probably give you a list of, off the top of my head, three or four, three or four advantages to working with an experienced franchisee and three or four challenges that you're faced with. Um, but I'm curious to get your insights on advantages and challenges when working with a, an experienced franchisee and onboarding them into your brand? Yeah, I think it's a real valid question, right? I think early in my career, I sort of always tried to grapple like, yeah, do I want somebody who's more entrepreneurial or somebody who's more inclined to follow a system and sort of follow the rules, if you will? And I guess what I've learned over time in the way I approach franchisees today is that it, it, you can't, I don't think you could really separate one from the other. Um, I think it's really every franchisee is different, which is part of what makes it so much fun and enjoyable, um, and that each one brings a certain level of experience and perspective to the business. And I think being a successful franchisor and success, success, successful franchise company, I think, is, is that ability to adapt. Um, 
some of our franchisees, for example, uh, the franchisee is very focused on development, right? They spend all of their time in the real estate world, the development world. Other franchisees spend all their time in the restaurant, right? They're, they're, they're kitchen people, right? They just want to be in there. They want to be talking to the crews and touching the crews and they have somebody else in the development. So I think in that same way, it, it's the same thing with that franchisee experience. So, so, so for folks who are experienced in the business, to me, it's a matter of really learning who they are. Uh, in fact, I would say, um, you know, one of the other learning experiences that Noodles as a brand had that would really translate well to franchising is, and I sort of mentioned employee retention. Um, Noodles figured out several years ago that a, a key to being, it's all about the people, right? It's, and it's the people in the restaurant. So the, uh, the company really set out to create an experience for the employee that was second to none. Um, and so, and obviously when COVID hit, that became a huge advantage. So unlike many brands, we, we did not see a big attrition level. It was sort of the great resignation because our employees were passionate. They loved the brand. And I think that experience really helps and translates very well to the franchisees because the franchisees sort of said, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, this is, they're doing things on the employee side that we could, we could model from, we could learn from. Um, and ultimately our success is we, we, we also are in alignment with you that is driven by the employee experience. Mm -hmm. And that becomes part of that franchisee experience. So we have very much a shared uh, belief and a shared vision on how to be successful. Yeah. And I, again, I, I agree with you. I think that the, the learning mode, if you will, or the approach mode to a franchisee, whether they have experience or no experience from a transfer of information and embedding the concept of following the system, that's the same. Obviously, um, you know, the variance is going to be personalities and how people consume information. So, so I couldn't agree with you more on that. Well, you know, we've covered a couple of things here on why, why franchisees matter. Oh, why franchise experience matters, uh, rather. Uh, any last thought on the topic that you want to leave us with on, uh, again, you know, experienced franchisees coming into a system versus non-experienced? So I guess the, um, you know, so Noodles and Company, we, we do focus on experienced franchisees. So, so having folks that come into the system with, without franchise experience, I think is a, uh, for us as a brand, we see that as a challenge. Um, and, and again, I sort of go back to that position that maybe for somebody who doesn't have experience, getting them to recognize that this is a team effort. Um, I think the days of, and, and I've known, and I'm sure you know, individuals who are great franchisees and are sort of the master of their, uh, their world, right? Um, I think in today's environment, just like in the corporate world, is that ability to have people who, who surround themselves with people with experience and varied experience with diverse experience. Um, I think that's as much a part of success. So uh, if, if somebody comes to us, like I said, I don't necessarily turn them away if they don't have experience, but I have a very real conversation with them about what they can expect and, and what they're going to be challenged with. And if they're not, if they're not willing to come back and, and recognize, okay, yes, I've never done a restaurant, so I'm going to bring in a restaurant operator. Yes, I, I've never applied for a building permit, so I'm going to need to hire the right person to help me there. Uh, if somebody's not willing to acknowledge sort of the reality of what they're facing, that to me is a, is a non-starter. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I agree. We, years ago, you, you, you mentioned Chipotle, years ago on the East Coast here, my partner and I, were, we worked for a company called Desert Moon Fresh Mexican Grill, and it was sort of a forerunner. We were kind of doing the fresh Mex thing long before there was a Chipotle. And it was modeled more like a, like a Rubio's, which we believe built their business on fish tacos. I mean, we just, you know, they were a great brand and, but it was more like Baja Fresh. Um, but why am I telling you this? I, I'm, I'm telling you this because when we would bring franchisees in, sometimes we would get the folks who either, uh, well, forget the either. We would bring, we would get folks in on a discovery day who had no idea what it was to run a restaurant. And we were fast casual, so we didn't have a lot of moving parts, but we had, you know, we had moving parts. And if we were a little bit unsure, we would do, when we did the, the tour of the restaurant, we would make sure we spent a little bit extra time around the grease trap. 
and explain like what that is. Um, and very often, you know, when you take someone who is of the belief that restaurant tours have a siphon hose from the cash register to their pocket, and you start explaining to them the amount of work and the amount of passion and how you have to follow a system and how you have to keep your people motivated. And you start to talk about all the elements to someone who has no experience at all. You start to, what is it? You separate the wheat from the chaff as it, as it were. So I appreciate uh, what you say, but you certainly bring them in, but you'd certainly sit them down and have a real conversation for sure, for sure. Yeah, no, that's right. I agree yeah. with you. Yeah. So, John, if someone wants to reach you directly or through your website or learn more about Noodles and Company, what do they do? Is there a website out? And and by the way, we we post this, you know, in in the bio of the of the webcast and 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 in the podcast. So no one needs to write this down. But why don't you just share with us how someone can learn more about the company or reach you? Sure. So the easiest place to start is Noodles.com. Um, and we, we have been very deliberate in on noodles.com. There's a link to franchising. When you go to the franchise section of the website, which I think is noodlesfranchising.com, but it'll automatically take you there when you click on it. Yeah. Um, but we've spent a lot of time and effort putting a lot of content there. Uh, and I believe that the franchise industry has evolved over time. I mean, it used to be that you would need to go to a trade show or read a magazine. Yeah. Um, I think today we're all used to doing online research. Um, and so it's not unusual that before somebody contacts me, I'll ask them and they'll say, oh, yeah, I've spent you know, eight hours reading about you and researching you and Googling your name and uh, press releases, and reading all that. So so we try to make it easy and, and create that franchise website with a lot of content, a lot of links to press releases, testimonials, uh, investment you know, uh, situations. So really try to give people because, again, I'd rather have somebody come to me that's done all their research um and, and to me that's also a good sign of that somebody's very engaged and willing to have a meaningful conversation yeah no i i agree with you i'll, I'll t you're preaching to the choir i i agree with you i think the website is the a great information tool and it's a great way so for those of you who want to know more about noodles and company simple website noodles.com it doesn't get any simpler than that that's great john thank you so much for being here um I may run into you in a few weeks in San Diego when I'm at the International Franchise Association Convention. Um, for those of you in the franchise world who don't know what that is, I would recommend you visit the IFA website. It's ifa.org and learn all about that. And uh, I can't thank you enough for your insights. Great stuff. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gary. It's great to be on with you. Okay.